This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, new format of the Cantec webinar series. Um, we're very excited to launch this new format. Uh, a lot of participation on this one. I'm very proud of everybody, the first one specifically. Uh, so this new format, if you guys haven't noticed yet, we're doing every webinar twice throughout different times, different days, so people can join at will and ask questions live. Uh, we kept those topics short. If you have any requirements for topics, send them to us. We'll add them to the list as we go into May, June, July, and so on. So um, we're very excited. Short, you know, to the point topic. And I, I think this week we started off with a short notice, but I, I think it's a very important topic to talk about on how to do lockdowns. Now, there's many ways of doing lockdowns in Entrepass. Uh, we've chosen the top three, but these are temporary lockdowns because I did get a thousand requests this week. I want to lock down my building. I want to lock this down. So it, it's not a permanent lockdown like for life safety or, you know, issues with schools and everything. It's really for the next two months. Then, you know, we don't care anymore. We'll figure out a solution, a permanent lockdown, which we offer also. So these are really straight to the point. We're done in five, ten minutes, depending on the size of your system. All right? So I'm going to show you the first one, which is very easy. The first one, uh, anybody can do that. It affects any controller, uh, and it's really permanent but it's only available in corporate and global, not available in special edition, all right? So to do a lockdown, uh, we use something called batch operations. So the first one, we go to users, and we go to batch operations. <laughs> Somebody has a baby. If you don't mind muting yourself, please. Thank you. All right, thank you. So basically, the first thing we do is we go to users and batch operations. And under our batch operations, when it comes up, wrong window, there you are, uh, we can say that all cards, all right, all cards or specific cards based on card type. So if you're not using a card type, in this case, you can say all cards, right? Or if you can't do all cards, Maybe this method is not, you, not good for you. We'll go to the next method, right? So let's say all I want all my visitors to be deactivated. So I choose my visitor's card type, right? And I choose my card state. And I mark that as invalid. So choose my card type as visitor. Choose card state. Make it invalid. And press execute. When I press execute, look at my screen at the bottom here. Instantaneously, this card has been modified and no longer works. The card has not been disabled. Now, if you have 10,000 cards, it could take a few minutes, maybe seconds realistically, but these cards are now invalidated right away. Now, the, that's easy. If I have a second card type, I want my employees now. I do the exact same thing, employees. The card state is already checked. I put it to invalid and I press execute and automatically my card type are invalidated. I don't have a employee card type, but there. And the card hasn't been changed. I haven't changed the access levels. All I've done is I've changed the card state to invalid. Now, we could be more creative and do like the end date if I want. I could put an end date if I want instead. Or I can put a change the access levels of people. But that's more intuitive and going into the card. By deactivating it, it just stops it from working. Now, be careful though, the doors don't lock. This is not a door locking feature. This is a card deactivating feature. If you have doors on schedules, this uh, feature, this lockdown, this quick lockdown may not apply for you. Maybe you want to use something else, and we'll get there in a minute. But this deactivates the cards. When the lockdown is finished, very simply, so I'm going to close this window. A month from now, two months from now, a week from now, depending how everything goes, you go to Users, Batch Operations, 
you choose the exact same card type, you check the card state box, and you put it back to valid. Now when I choose valid, and I press execute, and now I swipe my card, my visitor card is now working. That was my visitor card that didn't work before. Right? So instantaneously, I can reactivate those cards. Now, um, the only thing is, the only problem with this is, is if any card was invalidated before, right? For whatever reason, they won the lottery, they quit, they got fired, and you put them in valid, by checking to put them back to valid as a card type, it will reactivate those cards and those card types. So depending on how you maintain your expired or deleted cards, or if you delete them, there's no problem. If you change card types when they're deleted, like some people have a terminated card type. In that case, no problem. You just don't touch the terminated people, only touch the visitors and the employees, for example. All right. Anybody have any questions on this particular batch operation lockdown feature? So Timothy had the exact same question. If I reverse them, it's an all or nothing, right? So this solution may have to be reactivated, and then you have to go touch every card that need to be deactivated. So just be careful on this. Again, if you delete the cards that are already expired or deleted or uh, gone, or if you put them in a different card type. Some people, big companies, they want to keep records of people. They'll have a card type called terminated or not working anymore. So if that's the case, those cards you don't touch. It's only the people that are in these two card types or X card types you touch. All right. So that's the first uh, lockdown, the very quick instant lockdown uh, kind of system. But again, the doors don't lock. If you want to lock your doors, you would have to go to operations and doors and lock them. The next lockdown, which is my preferred lockdown, is the door menu here. Now this applies to all controllers except the KT200s and is available for corporate and global with a multi-site gateway and special edition also. So it applies to 90% of the market out here, right? And the only limitation is if you don't have a DSC panel. If you have a DSC panel, the moment you arm your alarm panel, it's going to apply the same settings and lock your doors down anyways. So as long as your alarm panel is armed, uh, you won't have any problems here. So the first thing we have to do is to do a, a full lockdown and control who can get in. Under devices and inputs, I can specify, I'm going to go pick a random input. Now you can pick any input you want that is not programmed. I'm going to pick input number uh, 11, for example. That input's not used in my system. I'm going to call this virtual lockdown. And you leave it normally closed or normally open, depending on your scenario, right? My input's not used, therefore I'm going to pick it to normally closed. I'm going to press save. Actually, and, and you put a monitoring schedule, I apologize. You put a monitoring schedule. You don't have to go wire anything. You just pick a schedule and put it normally closed. And you do this one per controller. Then you go to devices and doors. And one second. You pick your doors. You pick your front door, for example. My front door has a schedule. I'm going to remove the first person in for now just to show you that the door is unlocked on the schedule. All right. And then I'm going to go to the Options and Alarm System menu. And I'm going to go to External Alarm System Options. Whether you have an alarm panel, or if you have one, it's already configured, but you don't need anything here, nothing at all. Under External Alarm System Options, you go and, ch and you pick the input number 11. So under External Alarm Panel Options, you could pick your virtual input we just created. This, when this input goes an alarm, 
it will automatically lock the door, remove it from the schedule automatically. I haven't touched the door schedule. The door still has a schedule, but there's no more schedule on it. The door doesn't unlock, doesn't unlock for anybody on a schedule. First man in or not, it doesn't matter. And then under disarming request, you can specify a single access level or a group of access levels of who's allowed going in in case of an emergency, like the administrator. So anybody in the admin access level is allowed going in. Or if you have three admin levels, you go to the ad access level group and you could choose a pre-created group or you can make your own group. And the groups can be created under the group menu. For now, we're gonna pick a single admin access level. So any card in the admin access level will be able to get in, okay? If not, you'll not be able to get in. And again, that's all you have to do. Press okay and you save the door. And you repeat this for all the doors you have. Yes, it'll take you a minute per door, but let's be realistic, it's not that long to do, all right? So now, my door is not in a lockdown state because my input is in normal, uh, regular service. If I go to operations and inputs, my input here, it's actually in a lockdown state, so now, my door is armed, my door is no longer in a schedule, and my visitor card, which was working before, is no longer working. See, the door is armed. So automatically, the card that was working, without even changing any state, right? The last thing we did was the card was working. Just by putting an input and forcing it in the, in the in alarm state, it automatically locked my door. Whereas my administrator, which I believe is this one, access granted so mr admin can still get in whether he opens the door or not the door won't go on a schedule the door relocks behind him and life goes on and the visitor and the regular employees and whoever else it is still can't get in that pretty cool guys so this is my preferred one why i don't change cards I don't change door programming other than that input. It's instant and it's hardware based. It really relies on the controller, but it also gives me the ability to let certain people get in without having to do massive changes, right? And it applies to almost all the versions and almost all the controllers, except for the KT200s, unfortunately, right? So if I want to return my lockdown back to you know regular, I can go back to devices and inputs, choose my particular input, and either delete it, which ends everything, or just change the state. Again, there's nothing wired on the input. So if I change the state and I save it, now my door is disarmed and my door should be on a schedule. That one didn't do it. But if I swipe my card, my visitor now works. See access granted for my visitor, for my front door, and let it time out, my other card also works. Let's find out why the schedule didn't work, but probably I didn't put the right times in there. Oops, I forgot Wednesday. It's the Greek Independence Day, you know. We're not supposed to work today, but you know. Save it, save it, door goes on a schedule. The moment the input goes back to an alarm, everything relocks right away. Any questions on this one? Yes, so great question, Kevin. Uh, the input that we just programmed can be is per controller. Right? So if I have my other doors on the same controller, I don't have to make another input. All I have to do is just reprogram the setting on door two using the exact same input. 
right? So I pick the same input for the same controller, and I just choose the access level that I want him to go in. And I can say, you know what, the second door, nobody gets in, neither the administrator. So the back door, which is more secure, more like, you know, less protected or whatever, and nobody gets in, even the administrator. So they both follow the same lockdown rule. They just don't uh, work, let that person in or we're allowed. And again, there's nothing to wire. All you got to do is program an input in the opposite state, so normally closed, let's say, and the input's naturally empty because you never wired on it anything. If you have two controllers, you will need to program the same input or another input on that controller also. All right, any questions on this one? Excellent. So, Kevin, I hope we answered that question for you. Now, the last way, the last major way of doing a lockdown is, is a lot more complex, a lot more complex, a lot more flexible, but it's a lot more complicated, all right? But it allows us to uh, control what we want to do with the cards at a granular level, all right? Uh, basically, what we can do is under devices and this feature applies to all controllers all editions except for special so for corporate and global it works for special uh, corporate and global kt 200s kt 300s all controllers everything at the same time what we do is we go to definition and task builder and we choose to make a new task and we name it one time action we hit the command button, and in the command button, we choose a door. Under the door, we specify what we want to do to this door when somebody swipes a card. We want them to let them in. So we say we're going to do a one-time access. We're going to simulate an access granted. Okay? And we're going to choose not a door because imagine you had a thousand doors that will require you to make a thousand tasks that's a lot of work it's no longer a five minute lockdown anymore we're going to choose something called the message value message value means every time i do an action like a card swipe on a door take that same door Okay, and apply a one time access to yourself. So basically, every door that causes a trigger will also receive the task to be done on them. That's what message value means. Okay, and when you press OK, this command appears. I've already done it for you guys. Then we go to definition and trigger and alarms, and we specify of one time trigger which I've created. I choose a the component of door and here you can apply a single door or a group of doors or all doors. It's really up to you. This is where you have the flexibility of saying different administrators can get at different doors. And you build yourself a trigger group. Or by going right click and new for example you can pick which doors you want. Notice that I've only chosen doors three and four. Doors one and two don't apply in this lockdown state. So when if I lock my all my doors, only people that swipe their card on doors three and four, depending on who they are, will be let in. So only the important doors are gonna work and my task will be always valid. So any time of the day, you controlled whatever time you want, and I want it to be a one-time action. So every time somebody swipes a card, I want a one-time action. Under the event tab, what event do you want? It's not going to be access granted, because obviously that defeats the whole point of everything. If I disable my readers, I can choose my event access denied door manually disabled 
when I check that checkbox, every time a reader is disabled, when I swipe my card, I will get an access denied door manually disabled, which will tell the door if it's an important door to unlock itself for X seconds. The problem with that is that it's going to be everybody. That kind of defeats the purpose of disabling your readers and then having an override task to let anybody get in. It kind of goes against the grain, right? So what we can do here, we can use extended filter. Use extended filter. Under the extended filter, I can go and single-handedly add a card or cards to my list. So I could say Mr. Admin is allowed going in. So when I have Mr. Admin that causes an access denied door disabled, on these doors, go and unlock the door for 10 seconds. All right? And I press save. You can add more than one person if you want. You can add multiple people if you want. When I go to operations and doors to start my lockdown, I simply go and disable my readers. So somebody goes in here, disables the readers, and now the readers are disabled. Notice that the visitor card doesn't work on any of the readers. Notice that the administrator card does not work on reader number two, because even though he is the admin, we said the important doors are doors three and four. So if I choose my doors three and four, I now get, notice carefully, uh, one-time access, so the, the reader is disabled, and then I get a one-time access uh, to unlock by the operator. So the, so here, actually, look here. So Mr. Door number three was denied, and then the door was overwritten by the smart link and generated a one-time action to unlock. Then I didn't unlock the door, and it gave me a timeout. It works the exact same way as a, a card swipe, an access granted, let's say, uh, and triggers here. Right? This is very practical when you have a few people that need to get in, right? And you can't use the previous method, which is the access level selection. Because imagine you have a warehouse, right? All the employees have access to everything, or nine to five employee access. But you want one person to get in just in case something goes wrong. Either you have to go change his access level because they all have the same access level. So that's new access levels card modifications and so on, or you can apply this feature. Now, there are some limitations of this feature. It doesn't lock the doors. So if your doors are on schedules, you can't apply this. You have to use the input button or remove the schedules. Also, it is software driven. If I lose my network and or I lose my smart link, all this particular this particular lockdown stops working because it is smart link driven. It is software driven, right? But I haven't modified the cards, I haven't modified my door settings and all that stuff. And lastly, this applies on the lock output. This will unlock the door. So if I go to my doors, certain people here, when they program their lock outputs, they wire the door, the strike, on the lock output, which is perfect. Also, they wire the, lock, the, 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 the user relay for the lock output, which is relay to follow lock output. That's perfect. That one works also because the door unlocks and this follows the lock output. The only scenario, this is very rare, is under, under access events when they put the lock output under access granted. If they have the lock under a relay and programmed under access granted, the third solution doesn't work. My favorite solution is the input one, which is hardware-based, 
fully locks down your doors and you control who gets in the building whenever you want. All right. Does anybody have any questions on anything we saw today? So if you have any questions, you can write them down. Until then, uh, this is how you perform very simple lockdowns without any um, real uh, physically wiring anything or changing anything, right? We do have full lockdowns if you want using more uh, permanent methods, which basically are for life, safety, and so on. We could do those also, but that's not the point of this today's topics, right? Uh, don't forget, this webinar is recorded and will be available shortly online if you ever want to watch it again. And also, next Monday, we have a different topic on different webinars, and this one will be replayed also in a few weeks. So every Wednesdays and every Mondays, please join us. Same channel, same place, all the time. All right.